The Dow, as Kelly just mentioned, is down almost 500 points right now after President Trump unveiled these tariffs on imported steel and aluminum. I mean, CSX moves these commodities. You move a lot of the manufactured goods that use these commodities. You also consume steel. You put steel on the ground for your tracks. Is this bad for business? Well, it's got a mix for, well, thank, first, thank you so much for coming out and meeting with us today. This is amazing. Um, uh, it's got, you know, implications on both sides. So we'll have to wait and see what this all really means. Uh, we, as you said, we're a consumer. Uh, and, but the news is that this could be good for some of our, uh, our domestic shippers. So um, we'll wait and see what the fallout is. And in terms of, I mean, one of the things that's playing out in the markets right now, are we on the precipice of a greater trade war potentially uh, under this Trump administration. Are we on the precipice of a greater trade war when you start to see things like tariffs rolled out? I think there's been a discussion of uh, tariffs uh, for a long time since the president uh, took office. Um, you know, so uh, the implications on CSX would be more along the lines of uh, how NAFTA works out and, and whether or not there would be any kind of a material imp uh, impact on the uh, uh, imports that we bring in but, uh, through the containers, through the seaports. Uh, but again, this is kind of noise that's been around for a while and it hasn't moved uh, uh, much of our business uh, one way or the other. And officials right now are renegotiating NAFTA. Do you think that stays or do you think there's a genuine risk, especially looking at the news today, that that could go away? Well, we're certainly following it because the auto imports have a, are, play a big part for the rail industry. Uh, we're lucky that uh, in terms of Mexican import traffic, that wouldn't impact CSX as much as maybe some of the Western railroads. Uh, our, our business partners, our uh, manufacturers are located more on our territory. But it's something we're watching, and uh, yes, I think there'll probably be modifications both to uh, trade flows with uh, Mexico and Canada, and we'll just have to wait and see what happens. And taking a look at shares of CSX today, they have been bucking this broader trend. They have been up today. I think they're up right now maybe about 2% uh, coming into the close here. Uh, one of the things that investors and analysts have been looking to see, I think from you and the team you've been assembling, I mean, you came into CSX in October by Christmas. You were CEO. Um, there's been a lot of focus on this precision railroading turnaround at CSX. How is that going so far? So far, so good. Yeah, it's been a very wild 120 days, let me tell you that. And we're very excited to be here today, me and the team, and roll out what it is we're implementing in terms of changing the business model to scheduled railroading, improving the efficiency, improving the performance of the company, growing our earnings. I think the team did an extremely great job today uh, in presenting the story. Uh, to the financial community, you know, we're targeting a 60% operating ratio in three years, which puts us as a, in the leadership uh, in the pack uh, with the railroads. So it's going well. Um, very, very excited, and uh, I think the um, uh, obviously the market uh, today uh, liked the story. And I believe Kelly uh, has a question for you. Yeah, Morgan, thank you, and Kelly? Jim, thanks for your time today. So I just want to be clear on this point: How much steel do you guys use? How much steel and aluminum? How much steel and aluminum? Well, again, we would the primary places where we would would be using steel obviously would be in our rail, uh, and uh, as well as on most of the heavy heavy equipment that we move around, rail cars and locomotives, etc. Are a large uh, component of that would be steel. So, in terms right. of uh, consumption, uh, those would be the uh, uh, principal so uh, places where we would be buying. Yeah, I'm guessing that's a fair amount if you're talking about, you know, rail tracks. <laughs> you guys have a lot of those. So the cost of that steel goes up 25 percent. Um, does that mean that your profits are going to get hit by 25 percent? Or are you going to pass that along in terms of cost increases to your consumers? Oh, well, over time, obviously, you know, we would, uh, we would absorb the uh, initial cost in the, uh, as we went forward with our capital programs and that. But over time, that cost, uh, like everything, gets passed on. Do you have a view in terms of uh, which nation produces the best quality steel, uh, given that this is going to le likely lead to fewer imports of steel? Are there other nations that produce uh, better steel than the U.S. at the moment? Uh, right now, I mean, the, the, uh, the, the products that we're talking about consuming right now, uh, rail, uh, spikes, uh, railroad equipment, uh, we use primarily good old U.S. steel. U.S. manufactured steel.
Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.